Hey, I'm Brian, Slasher and Suits. What's going on, dude? So today we're covering Fear Street 1666. We're finishing off the trilogy. We started in 1994, then went to 78, and going way, way back to 19... Wait, no, 1666, like the devil. And if those other two movies were like slasher movies, this one is more like Salem Witch Trial-ish. And even though we don't get a kill as cool as the Bread Slicer kill, we do get our like creepiest kill coming right at you. Yes, I, I can see now. I can see everything. See the town... Preacher Cyrus is actually under the spell of a witch. So he's doing like the witch's Satan's work and everything. And he took out everybody's eyes. Oh man, that's so gruesome. Well, he probably took out their eyes first before taking out his own. Because you can't kill anybody with no eyes. <laughs> I was surprised at his death until I realized, whoa, it's not the version of him in 1994, it's the version of him in 1666, because that's supposed to be Dina, but she's looking through the eyes of Sarah, but it's all played by the same people. He was a pretty much an important character in 1666 and in 1994, but right, he survived a supermarket run-in with an axe murder, so you're right, he's not going to go out quietly. But this one, it was so brutal, too. He sort of died off screen, but man, you can't show that. If, you, if you're killing somebody underage, you just gotta show the bodies. You can't show the actual action. And I don't know if we count all these bodies because a lot of these people didn't have speaking roles or you don't recognize them because it's hard to recognize anybody with no eyes. So I have two counts. They said that's 12 minus the brother, so 11. Or exactly, that's why I'm only counting the brother pretty much out of that too because he did have a speaking role and he was like a pretty main character, at least in the first half of the story. Sarah! So of course the preacher has to get killed. You can't kill all these people then not get killed yourself. But the whole thing was he was under a trance of a witch. But what witch? Huh? This guy witch. And he's not like a traditional woman witch. He's a male witch. He's a mitch. And his evil goes through generations. Like your son's 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 sons will also be like the deal with the devil and also witches themselves or you know father son they pass down their witchy ways like down to your son and they gotta carry on in your footsteps and this kill was also pretty cool too like we haven't had an impaling this whole time and there it was with the old-fashioned uh pitchfork the reveal of him actually being the one in charge was actually pretty neat because he seems like a reluctant villain. Like he wants to deal with the deal with the devil, but he's not meaning for people to get possessed and kill off the children and everything. Or maybe I'm reading it wrong. Like he knows his witchcraft cause, this eyeless killer guy. So he's like, hey, he knows my secret and I better kill him before he rats me out. So they hung Sarah for being a witch. And not just because she was a lesbian too, but that sort of added to it. But it was all because this guy was the real witch and he let her take the fall for being a witch. So she should join up with him in order not to be hung. But the hanging went off uh, pretty alright. Like you got to see the dance of it a little bit and just like, I don't know, that face when like the life escaped. It was a pretty cool hanging. Now that Sarah's dead, we go back to present day, or what present day is here, 1994. Alright, that didn't count as a kill, but that was one of the best headshots out of the whole series. And that girl was grown up Ziggy from 1978. So now from 78, she's that much more grown in 1994.
And remember her sister, you see? So she owes those boogeymen some payback because that last boogeyman, he was going off on her with an axe. She made it like she got resuscitated back to life, but her sister did it. That's why she needs to get some payback. So she joins up with the crew in 1994 to try to trap the boogeyman inside the mall. And then you get headshots like this. We got the 5150. Either that boogeyman is super stealthy, like that's a superpower, or this cop wasn't trained in, I don't know, checking right behind you. So, if you go through these boogeyman's powers, they're pretty much super strong, it seems like, but not too strong. He's strong enough just to punch one in the gut and pick him up a little bit, but that's about it. The other ones couldn't even break down the door or those gates, so they're not super strong. Or their vulnerability is they'll take a lot of gunshots, but they really get affected when you shoot them in the head. It won't kill them, it'll just slow them down a bit so you can get away. Same reasoning with Baghead Tommy in 1978. He lost his head, but he didn't die. He just took a little bit for it to grow back, I guess. Or you follow you forever. Or he will never let you go. So they killed the main guy in charge of all the boogeymen or at least in charge of conjuring them with the witch bloodline and everything. They all just sort of fade away like a Thanos snap. So for about two movies we thought it was a witch the whole time but we didn't think what men could be witches too and this guy was a witch to be prosperous but all he is is a sheriff. You could have just applied for a sheriff job it's a small town. You could have got it without a witch spell. So I got a total kill count of six or right you gotta add all those people who died inside that church so that's an extra 11 so six plus 11 we got 17. Fear Street was pretty good. My favorite one's probably 1978 because come on man it's a camp slasher but this one was fun this one probably had the best like story out of all of them. All right if you like that subscribe watch some more catch a live stream sometime and catch you dudes later. Later dudes.